Hey guys, guild members, uh, Rowan here. Um, we're going to be opening guild 20 for you today. And I brought a friend because we are doing something very special today. Absolutely. So I'm David, uh, Carlo Brewing company Hellbrewers. We probably know it as Oaras. So you're from Ireland and look forward for this. We're going to be opening the box. Um, so we have uh, five IPAs in this box. You know Citra Mosaic. I've heard about them, yes. You, you've yeah, heard yeah. about yes, them? Yes, yeah. So we tried to make a IPA without Citra and Mosaic. Nice. Because it's uh, <laughs> everywhere. almost everywhere. Yes, in my coffee and everything. So, um, that's actually quite funny. <laughs> 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 sometimes, sometimes. We used, uh, uh, so wow, a new hop, HBC uh, 1019. It's, uh, to me, it's very creamy. And okay. It almost gives a hint of uh, caramel. Mm, um, okay. It's still an experimental status mm -hmm. from Yakima. Uh, we use Sabro, Nelson, and I think it's not on the label, but from the top of my head. Oh, it is Idaho 7. Okay. So oh, we okay. tried to use two hops to mm -hmm. mimic one of Citra and one of Mosaic. <laughs> so actually, I haven't tried it from the can yet. I was on vacation. Sleutelaar. Sleutelaar. Yeah, I got mm. a little bit of the coconut creamy. Mm. Very creamy. The it's... coconut's probably the sabro. The the floral coconut stone fruit. Yeah. Apricot maybe. Yeah. Usually we use a yeast that's really pushing peach. Okay. Um, we blended two yeasts in here. And one of them is supposed to give some vanilla note as well. Okay. That probably add to the creaminess as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you think the ABV is? Mm. Mm. You got a little bit in the end. Mm. Six? No, <laughs> eight and a half. Okay, it's, it's, <laughs> okay. It hides, it hides it very well. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. a big pack. It's a very big truck. Yes. And I am very afraid it's for us. Hello, meneer. Hey. Where can I come? Sorry? I come in a pelletje later. Okay. The, the van really looks great, though. Yes. It's uh, yes. some nice marketing team. Really did well there. Yeah. That's good. Motor oil on the back of the car. Don't drink and drive, please. No. Absolutely. We have oh, Shaq yeah, now. Yeah. Shaq, Shaq, do you also want a beer? We were just tasting the butterscotch one. Yes. Because Duffy picked that one out. Yeah. <laughs> Again, nice, I, I had nice, to. Nice label. Nice yes. label, yeah. Old industry. It's a uh, very industrial, yeah. Uh, nice label, and I had to pick the whiskey one. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're from Ireland. You kind of. Kind of from Ireland, yeah. yeah. I work in Ireland. <laughs> you work in Ireland, yes. yeah. So this, this inspiration uh, actually came from the Facebook group. Um, some people were blending um, booze with our stouts. Mm -hmm. And we thought, well, maybe we Why can do something with it. With it. Yeah. yeah. So we did a tasting and uh, tried eight different whiskeys. Very good excuse. Very, Very good excuse. What a day. Uh, tough day, of course. Oh, <laughs> working hard, absolutely. We made a, a, a little blend of different whiskies um, and we infused it. Quite some bottles went in actually. Whiskey can be very pungent and I'm happy. It's in your face, but it's not too much. Oh yeah, no. That's re really like that alcoholic bomb. Yeah, but it's very smooth. Ooh, the vanilla helps smooth it out. Mm -hmm. I don't know, are you familiar with butterscotch? Yeah, I was saying like they have a dessert called tablets in Scotland. It's yeah the sweetest thing that you can get. And it has really this very deep toffee flavor. I think this one is a bit more balanced because it's not as powerfully sweet, mm -hmm. which is good, but it has this like very smooth, rich toffee in it. What do you think, Shaq? Yeah, it's very nice. It's very smooth. Mm. And for a 13%, 13% is really smooth. Oh. That's uh, pretty nice. We did some chocolate in there as well. Bolivian cacao is quite like a, a, a basic, very deep 
chocolate cacao. Mm -hmm. It sounds weird to say that about a <laughs> cacao that it is chocolatey. Yeah, but some but cacaos can be really oh, not yeah. chocolatey. Yes, yeah, a lot of coffee or a lot of like Indeed. woody flavors yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, we have three more stouts. The first one is a uh, hoppy stout. The Kracht van Eenvoud. It's very hoppy. It's almost a black IPA, mm -hmm. Cascadian dark ale. It goes towards that territory. Mm -hmm. But we, uh, of course, being Moorschlotel, we had to make a little bit more thick, mm -hmm. creamy, stout tea. Yeah. Um, so there's uh, actually a very uh, robust, robust uh, malt base behind it. It's not just colored black. No, no, it's mm -hmm. not just an That's good. IPA with a little good, bit yeah. of. Uh, Roast malt. No, yeah. no, there's actually a, quite some caramel and like toasty malts in there. Next beer, we have the uh, Almond Ganache Bulldozer. It's our collaboration with Prism. Shout out to Antoine. What we did here, actually, it's uh, one of the cacaos is the same as we used in the butterscotch, mm -hmm. the Bolivian, um, because we find it a very rich cacao, very friendly cacao, mm. and something that you can use as a base for a different cacao. In this case, uh, we use the Indian cacao, mm -hmm. which is quite spicy. I get some uh, cinnamon notes. Nice. Um, one of the brewers even said like curry. Oh, wow. Which is maybe mildly influenced <laughs> because it's an Indian cacao. It's an Indian cacao, but um, it sounds interesting to be fair. It makes it more interesting. Mm -hmm. It's not just nuts and chocolate. Mm -hmm. There's something behind it, which is quite fun. Very dark roasted almonds. Mm -hmm. We like to roast our uh, nuts very dark mm -hmm. because then they stand up against the violence the of the, of the uh, stouts. And then the vanilla variety stout. It's in our extravagant series. We do a series that there is no limit in what ingredients we put in. We did quadruple IPA with a lot of Nelson. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. We did a uh, chocolate stout. So different varieties of mm -hmm. cacao went in. And this is a vanilla stout. For these beers, we want to be super sure what we're going to put in because it's mm -hmm. so much. Um, so we did a vanilla tasting. We had like 10 or 12 beans next to each other. Wow. We soaked them in motor oil. Mm -hmm. So you have an idea of how, it, how the bean is, the beer. but also how yeah. it works in a beer. Absolutely. Um, because there can be some surprises. Some oh, yes. vanillas don't taste like vanilla. No, yeah. Some vanillas really give that vanillin, yeah. like the, the molecule that in the many ice, ice creams cream. yeah 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 um was interesting it's uh it's a vanilla bomb mm -hmm. maybe it's fun to taste that one as well real quick do you want to try the extravagant oh, yeah. vanilla stout sure. whoa there was a little <laughs> oil uh oh <laughs> i don't know if you can see it but there's, there's a little bit of oil on top of the oh, yes uh, beer here that's that's pure vanilla oil yes yes Oh, yeah. Vanilla. There's bomb. almost a, like a bourbon hint to it. Mm -hmm. And I swear we didn't put booze in this one. Oh yeah, vanilla bomb. It's sweet without being cloying. No, exactly. Vanilla can be too much sometimes, but mm -hmm. this one is as much as you can without being too much. It's nice. It's nice. It's nice, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's because there's like eight times as much vanilla as we <laughs> usually do. So it was also triple mashed. It was a long day. Yeah, a lot of taste. Mm. <laughs> Malt. Millions. Whoa. Next series? Yes. So, we do a couple of exclusive things for the guild. One of them is the Indulgence mm -hmm. Barrel Aged Beer. It's our best barrels. And... This, the Eureka series, is more to try out new things. It's like mm -hmm. a Eureka moment. Yeah. Um, oh, wow, this is new. One. Yeah, it's the mm -hmm. most experimental one. Um, we try some uh, new things. We have three in this box. First, we have the cookie dough uh, pastry stout. Mm -hmm. um, it's triple mashed as well. Um, we never really worked with cookie dough. You know the, the ice creams? The cookie dough ice creams, like oh, the yes, little yes. chunky parts, those are not in here. Okay. That <laughs> doesn't give you a really nice drinking experience. Mm. But it's, uh, 
it's a flavor of the cookie dough, mm -hmm. like that smooth, doughy. Uh, actually, worked quite nice. I think next year we will do a, a big batch mm -hmm. as okay. a regular special. Nice. We have let's let's see which one we discuss first. The IPA. We just did stout, so let's yep. uh, try an IPA again. Yes. Um, first IPA, double IPA that we uh, double mashed. Mm -hmm. Double mashed, so we used twice as much mm -hmm. grain. And we used uh, a new uh, Yakima product, mm -hmm. uh, YCH 701, which is a okay. dry hop extract. Mm -hmm. So it's a natural CO2 extract oh, okay. from mm -hmm. uh, hops. Mm -hmm. And we use the Citra and the Simcoe one. Cheers. Close. It's really hazy as well. Yeah. It's a tiny touch darker because mm -hmm. there's so much malt in there for a double IPA. Mm -hmm. mm. Those extracts really help to pop the top note. Mm -hmm. In my experience, they don't do much for the mouthfeel. Yeah. They don't contribute polyphenols. For the flavor, it doesn't really work, mm -hmm. but it really pops the aroma. Yeah. So it's, it's like that, that thing that you, like the molecules that are here, mm -hmm. I think that's completely from the, that extract. From the extract, yeah. And we uh, did some T90 pellets, some uh, cryo as well. Mm. But uh, the dry up is mostly uh, that uh, extract. Even if the foam is a little bit green, <laughs> it's uh, it's still quite green, yeah. I don't know if you can see that on camera. But no, it's true. It's a lot of orange to me. Orange? Mm. Yeah? Like sweet orange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like uh, Valencia orange, maybe? Mm -hmm. It also gives a very permanent haze, I feel like. Mm. The, the extra malt. Next beer. Next yeah. beer? The other one. Again, meshes. So many meshes. <laughs> you, you like your double and triple meshes. Yeah. We also now like our quadruple meshes. Why not? Well, if you have a Mura filter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of helps the cost, yes. right? So this is a wheat wine. It has, uh, did I say how much? No. But we had to boil six hours <laughs> <laughs> because the uh, fourth mesh didn't fit. Wow, okay. So we needed to reduce, reduce the it, uh, like... kettle volume mm. so much to have place okay. for a new... So you're, you're doing malt extract, basically. Do, do you feel the can? It's, it's heavy. <laughs> it's heavy, yes. <laughs> wow. You want to pour it? it it's heavier than this it's, one. Yeah, yeah, for, you for can. Sure. We keep documents for every beer. And uh, we write a sensory note every day of every tank. Just to keep track of, is something weird happening? Mm -hmm. um, and we have a backlog of what happens. Uh, yeah with certain yeast strains or hops in a mesh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Paper works. Paper works. And I saw someone saying, this is not a beer anymore, this is soup. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or syrup more. Yeah, mostly. yeah. Oh, yeah, there we go. So this grain bill is 50% wheat. So we did 50% wheat on four meshes. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's go not going to happen in my brewery. <laughs> So what I really like about wheat is it gives it a little bit of a white bread mm -hmm. uh, layer, foundation. But then it, there's, mm. there's a, it's light, but it's mm -hmm. heavy. <laughs> it's uh, puffy, Yeah. if you see what I mean. Like a very good French baguette. Mm -hmm. It's fluffy, but syrupy. Yeah, in the same, at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. You might not expect it, but there's quite some hops in this beer as well. Okay. Because you have so much malt, you yeah, really cool. need to balance that out. Yeah. And you need something more than bitterness. You really need some aroma mm -hmm. hop as well. So there is some Cascade and some mm -hmm. Nelson hint in here. Just a, well. just a hint. Just to balance the beer. Yeah. Syrupy, but not cloying again. Exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Full bodied. Um, it's a bit of a theme going on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd say so. Okay, now the real, the, the stuff that is super... The stuff. The stuff. The barrel stuff. Um, this beer we did with a uh, bar, mm -hmm. a restaurant in The Hague. Okay. It's called uh, Roots. Uh, 16 months ago, we made a fresh beer for them, which was a, a barley wine. 
it was a split batch. Mm -hmm. Half of it we released then, and Fresh. half yeah. of it Barrels. went onto barrels. Mm -hmm. um, Heaven Hill Buffalo Trace, so okay. bourbons. So it's 100% bourbon barrel aged. What do you expect if someone says to you, 100% bourbon barrel aged? Barley wine, yes. Mm. Spice and vanilla. Mm -hmm. Maybe a bit of coconut. Yeah, yeah. It's actually, it's pretty well. I mm. always get so much vanilla from bourbon. Yes. Mm. Yeah, a lot of vanilla. A lot of vanilla. Coconut. But coconut as well. It, I... Coconut as well. And I'm looking for it. It's really there. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's, it's a bit boring to say charred oak, but <laughs> there's some char. Yeah. Which is good because it balances all the other more sweet tastes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Red fruit. Yes. Definitely. American barley wine, meaning that there's quite a lot of hops in there mm. as well. So, aging hoppy beers is quite <laughs> an interesting thing. Oh, yes. I don't know if you have any experience with beers on barrels that had mm -hmm. like aroma hops or dry hops even yeah a little bit it, it can go wrong it can definitely go very wrong yes oxidized hops are not funny no feet but uh, i'm not getting it here it's no uh, no no uh, but the red fruit could be coming from mm -hmm. there like the caramel from the barley wine and then uh, a little bit mm. of the hops like just a hint of some grapefruit yeah. that that makes the beer easier to drink yes and again, it balances out all the sweet taste. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because those are violent beers. Mm -hmm. This is a very nice. This is a straightforward uh, bourbon barley mm -hmm. wine. It's just uh, it's good. Yes. Shark, you can't have more beer. You must drive. So we taste it through all the beers, the box, and yep. we always end with a bottle. This one is Indulgence 20. Mm -hmm. um, it's super exclusive for the guild. Um, it's the VIP beer. It's the VIP beer, yeah. It's a, it's a special one. It's our best barrels. Um, let's crack it. Oh, yes. I trained on that. <laughs> Ooh. So we never tell on the label what's in the barrels because uh, it is a uh, decision that is made when we need an indulgence. Mm -hmm. What are our best barrels right now? What can we make? Mm -hmm. Because we don't really see our... <laughs> he liked it. He liked it. <laughs> yeah. we, we don't really see our barrel age program as we... Well, the Barrel of the Roots was a kind of a special because we never <laughs> yeah. do that. Um, but we usually see it as we put base beers in barrels. We mm -hmm. see how they go. Yeah. Um, we usually put one beer then in different barrels. So we have mm -hmm. like a huge spice rack mm -hmm. to choose things from. Yeah. And at this point, the Space Side 9092 barrels. Wow. So that's a mm -hmm. Scottish whiskey. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't even born by then. I was. <laughs> so don't don't tell anyone. No, it's only on video now. <laughs> okay. But um, those barrels were so old. Uh, we got them. But the, the special thing is that those barrels live outside. Mm -hmm. So they are old and live outside. Uh, meaning that you have quite some interaction between the wood mm -hmm. and the liquid in there. So what would you expect from a Scottish whiskey, a space side, like the mm. area of space side? Smoother, but slightly spicier whiskey mm -hmm. no smoke no smoke no no i i can pick up a little bit of spice but it could also be from um part of this blend was a rye stout mm. so it probably plays mm -hmm. in the same oh yeah same area mm -hmm. it helps the spice yeah. of the whiskey so it's quite a this, this beer is really not for the faint of heart it's mm. it's boozy as well yes but yes. it, it has a lot of like very dark rye bread in the end. 
It's like hearty, spicy. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit, I, it, it sounds negative, but I don't mean it that way. Powdery, mm -hmm. but chocolatey mm -hmm. powdery. Yeah. Like, um, like a chocolate milk, mm -hmm. but then your grandmother, so it's like a craft chocolate <laughs> milk. And you, she, she made it for you at that moment. And it kind of settled out. Mm -hmm. And, and that, she knows that, that you for... really need more chocolate powder than what would, would be good for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just like ice. If you put all the bottles next to each other, it's just a number that's the difference. Mm -hmm. But we write that little letter about mm -hmm. the beer. We, we really try to highlight it in mm -hmm. the tasting. So it's uh, that's why these videos are fun. Yes. Because this mm -hmm. is really the moment that we tell why this beer uh, is special is special and why these barrels were the best at that mm -hmm. moment. Uh, and then Michiel does his magic, blending it. Speaking of blending. We have to do that. Maybe we can do some. Yes. Um, thank you, guild members, for again listening to our gibberish. <laughs> um, it was fun. We're going to go back brewing now. Uh, it was fun doing this with you as a guest. Thank you very much um, for having me. Always welcome. Um, see you in the next one. Enjoy. Good. Nice. Is it well? Ah, very well. Is it good? Yes. <laughs>